All right. Hello, everybody. Good morning from Arizona. Looks like we got a few people here ready to go. Uh, if you're in the chat, just say hello. Let us know where you're from. Got a bit of an echo here. I just need to turn off my speaker over the computer, apparently. All right, let's see if I got that. Hmm. All right. Hopefully that helped everybody. Let me know if you can hear me okay. And we will get started here very quickly. All right, looks like we already got some people from the UK, Scotland, Germany, Kansas. How's my audio, everyone? All right, looks like we got a whole bunch of people. This is great. Okay, so we're going to get started without any delay here. Let me... Hmm. Let me see what we got going on here, guys. All right. Are you guys hearing any kind of an echo? I just want to make sure that I don't have anything uh, messed up here. Put this in here so I can hear. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. It's uh, it's always something here. <laughs> no echo. Good. Um, give me one sec, guys. I got a little bit of a, a reverb on my end. I'm going to see if I can fix it. Hold on one sec. Amy's going to come over. She'll she'll help me fix this. But um, we are going to get started here in just one second. We've got Craig. Actually, I think I know what's going on here. Oh, there we go. All right. There we go. I think I got rid of the echo. So I think we're okay. <laughs> Sorry about all that. I think we're good here. No, there was a second window popped up that I didn't know about. Okay. All right. Okay, last time. Everybody can hear me good. We're good to go. No echo from Mike. Sounds good. Okay, so thanks for joining, everybody. Today we're uh, very pleased, again, to have uh, Craig from Record Power. Craig is an expert on all things record power. And last time on the Herald, he provided us with tons of valuable information. And today he's going to talk about CAMVAX. Uh, CAMVAX, if you're not aware, are an excellent choice for dust collection in shops, whether it be small or large. And he's going to kind of walk us through them, show us the details, give us some insights to manufacturing and quality. And it's going to be very valuable. So. Uh, I kind of feel like CAMVACs are still a new thing here in the U.S., or at least for in my area. So Craig is going to be able to fill us in on all kinds of great stuff. So let me pull up Craig and we will get started. Craig, thanks for joining us. Hi, Chad. Thanks for inviting us again. Nice to see you. Yeah, it's awesome that you did this. Thanks again. Uh, we're looking forward to your presentation. And if you don't mind, I'll just... Uh, throw out questions from the viewers. I've got the chat pulled up on YouTube. So if anyone wants to ask questions live, I'll throw them right to you if that works. That works fine. Yeah, the more the merrier to be that one. So there's a lot to get through with CAMVAC in general, because we've got that much of a, a range, if you like, that we're trying to help everybody keep the workshop clean and their health intact, to be honest with you. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's crack on and get started. That'll be great. Thanks, Craig. So, welcome everybody. I was going to say good evening, but I think it's good morning, good evening, 
and good night. There's a few areas from. I think Chad's just said we've got quite a few people in the UK and America, Germany, and everywhere else. We've got positioned here the uh, the three three six dash four, which is one of the most common uh, canvacs that we do. It's a twin motored version on this one. But before we start, really, what we want to do is just give you an idea because this is a production machine that we make here in our factory. Uh, and we've just been around the factory today and we've had a few clips before we a presentation just to show you a bit of video in of the factory and a few of the, uh, the actual processes that we do to get this running. So if you can all see that now, is that the one running, Ollie? Yeah, that so that's great. The, uh, that's the lid's been uh, machined up whether it's one motors and there you can see the the drilling and the riveting of the handles and the motors that we, we put on there so that's part of the factory and we've, we've got one or two just to show you but before we get started on the actual machine and we will get straight into it um, obviously the motors that we use are a, a one kilowatt motor brush motor that we've got there uh, these are easily accessible when you you turn the machine over and obviously you get a five-year warranty with this machine so over time depending on the use that you've had you're going to get a lot of wear on the brushes so it's something that's easily changeable uh, to keep the motor in tight once the motor's in place underneath and inside what you'll see is it's covered up here so it's got protection with this top lid and then underneath that is where the filters go on so obviously to protect it to stop the dust and shavings getting into there that's the important bit what we're trying to do is stop dust and shavings getting into the motor that will help the extraction when we showed you the um, the lids earlier on when they were being laser cut obviously this is the sort of lid that we've got on and then it's been pre-assembled with the switches on the top with the outlets when the motor's running obviously there's an air outlet or a couple of air outlets depending on the amount of motors you've got on there and then underneath you can see the suppressor the two switches you'll see on the other side and then there's a seal around the drum so when the motor and everything's fitted on that pr protects it and seals it to make the unit work um, the other one that we have got a little bit of a video of if we can get it up um, is the actual drum itself this is from a 386 which is a 90 litre drum so obviously this is painted in the the Canvike record power brand and then there's the the tear shape that's again laser cut into there before painting that allows then for the new sort of uh, bayonet fitting to be fitted on which is one of the features that has happened recently over the last 12 months or so we've got a bayonet fitting so if we come back to the machine I think Colin might find the uh, the video of the, the laser cut and we'll show that later. If we come back to the machine, like I said, this is the 3364, which the code for it, don't get too worried about the code, Chad will be able to fill you in which machine you want and the, the literage of it. Um, if you're in the US, it's a 104840. It's about 13, 14 uh, kgs weight wise. Um, and you're looking at about 108 litres um, a second is the airflow on this for going through and when you take the lid off what you'll see is what we've just been trying to explain earlier where we've got the filter bags over the top on there and what you can do if we take the one of the one of them off you'll see the filter bags this machine has been used we had the tiny turner in here the other week doing a, a demo and this is the machine to use so you've got it's a three stage filter so you've got the cotton bag which goes over the top if I just spin that around a little bit you'll see it better on this side obviously the motors hidden in there all protected this goes back over the top and then the paper filter is the one that probably gets most of the use so the more often we change this the more efficient the dust extractor is going to be like I was saying, it's a three-stage filter. We put the paper bag back on and there's a elastic band on there, which you can see, which when this goes down in place, it holds it over the cotton bag. 
and just keeps it in place. And it's the easy things that actually work on that. Just take that down, make everything nice and secure. What you, when I say three stages, you've seen two stages. The first stage is, again, the cotton bag. And this goes over the drum. And that's going to obviously protect because you're going to be getting loads of shavings in there, but dust as well. Because what you've got here is a, it's high pressure, low volume. So when I'm saying we're getting 108 litres uh, a second coming through, once we've covered that up, everything's going on underneath this first filter before it even gets through to the paper and the cotton filter again. But if we just look inside on the overhead view, what you'll see is one of the improvements that we've had lately. And this is the bayonet fitting. Because when the motor's sat in here, obviously it's sat in and around, when it comes through, it works on a cyclonic system. So as the shavings come in, the old style drums, what would have happened, you'd have just had a round sort of pipe in there that's coming in and just directly hitting the motors. And then the motors are going to try and deal with it. But then you're going to be hitting one part of the filter all the time. The advantage of this, the cyclonic, is the actual inlet comes past the motor. And what we've put up there is showing you this circular action that the dust actually performs in the bottom of the drum. Now, you don't usually see this when you've got everything in place. So what that means is all the heavy stuff is automatically going to drop to the bottom. Obviously, the dust particles are going to be going around the drum and that's what's going to be picking up on the filter itself but what we're doing by letting that happen is we're prolonging the life of the filters because they're not working as hard because they're not getting it directly with the shavings and the dust it's actually going around the drum like you've just seen the dust is picking up on the filters and the heavy stuff then as soon as you switch the machine off everything drops to the bottom The idea behind dust extraction is the cleaner we keep the filters, the more efficient the machine's going to be. Now, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, that, because you're thinking, well, I need to pick my shavings up, I need to pick my dust up, how can I keep the filters clean? You've just seen me take the filters off, these can be knocked or even hoovered off when you're doing that. If you replace the paper filters on a regular basis, that's going to save you having to change the cloth filters. But in this instance, the cloth filters can also be washed. I've seen a lot of people take them outside and give them a knock. Knock all the dust stuff out of the way, over them off, keep them clean. That way the machine's breathing. Now we tell people you ought to be looking, running time on a, a machine like this is about 45 minutes an hour just over. If you've got clean filters and empty drum, you're going to easily cope with that before you need to turn the machine off for sort of five, ten minutes let everything cool down, empty the drum, start again. If you're doing high volume work, if you're just doing fine parcels of dust, obviously the dust, the drum won't need um, emptying as much. So the bayonet fitting, what that allows you to do when we're coming in, it's just to twist and remove. The older style was a pipe that come out and you've got to push the pipe on, circlip it on, take it off every time. What's this allowing you to do? Imagine if you've got numerous amounts of pipe and you've got one of these bayonet fittings you get one of these with every machine but you can buy extra ones of these so you can have one of these ready from your bandsaw from your lathe from everything else when you're ready to use that machine we can just go straight in turn and it's quickly usable again no matter what that's the idea and that's the actual bonus of the bayonet fitting ease of use craig we got a couple of questions if you're up for it uh, yeah, you mentioned the, the brushes on the motors are replaceable. Yeah. Is yeah. that something that can be supplied through record power? Yeah, we do spare brushes. Uh, no problem at all. They come in pairs. I'd always change a pair because when you're just removing it, it's just a clip. It's just a clip on the, the back end of the... Um, so you pull the cable out on the edge. There's a clip on the back end that you just open up and the, the all the... The orange, sorry, the, the red bit, as we can see here. I don't know if I can get a bit of a close-up on this camera here, Ollie. That might be better. Can you see that? So this yep. stays where it is, and the, the actual carbon brush is removed out. 
Um, and so you just pull the cable off there, which is a, a push fit, pull the brush out, replace the brushes. Like I said, oh, they come in pairs, so I'd always replace them as a pair. Um, and it just prolongs the life of the machine. And it's always worth just having a quick look and check at them. You can see from underneath, when it's in the unit, it's quite accessible once you take the four screws off that are holding it onto the actual lid itself. So it's quite an easy operation. Obviously safety in mind at all time, always unplug the cable when you're doing that. So we've got no electrics going into there. Just make everything safe, get it on the bench and you probably need a flat uh, screwdriver just to prise the tab off before it re releases out. So it's quite a, an easy operation to do when we do them. Like you said, you had the spares that you, people can ask for as and when That's required. Um, awesome. When you talk about filters and paper bags and things like that, people say, when should I change that? How often should I change the filters? Obviously, it's a difficult one to answer because we don't know how often you're using it. We don't know what sort of shavings are going in. Because if the drum's full and the filters are sort of clogged up a little bit, the motor's going to work harder. So what we're trying to do is make it easy for the motor to run. So try and keep it emptied as much as you can, clean the filters as much as you can, and then it'll make for a better life or life expectancy. I would say a paper filter, you're probably looking at around sort of 20 hours, 24 hours use before they probably need changing or cleaning. As long as they're not ripped or torn or anything like that, you can knock them off or just make sure they're clear of the fine particles of dust and probably use them again. Uh, so just keep an eye on them. Just makes it more efficient if you keep it clean. Probably want to keep a few spares around of those, I guess. Yeah, they come in a pack. When you get the machine, yeah. uh, in the bottom of the in the bottom of the, the drum itself, depending which machine you buy, you get a bag like this and it'll have 286, 386 on. You've got the instruction manual in there. You've got the easy fit cuff. You've got the cloth filters and a range of bags with a couple of spares in there at the same time. But we sell the, the ones for this. It's a CVA. You're testing me now here. It's CVA 170-101. Don't ask me why. It's that code. It's what we adopted. Um, and you get a pack of six, um, and they're not expensive. I'll let you find that one on your, your uh, website, Chad, and post that up. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> uh, Vicky asked a question. She has the older version without the bayonet fitting. Would it be worth attaching a separate cyclone bin to the cam back? Okay. <laughs> I'm smiling when I said it because I've just done it myself on one. Um, the cyclonic that you're talking about, uh, something we are looking at at the moment. These are the ones out there at the moment. What's happening with that? And it's a great, sorry, who asked the question? Uh, Vicky asked, she said she has the older one without the bayonet fitting. Would attaching a separate cyclone, would it be worth attaching a separate cyclone to the yeah. back? Obviously, there's two little questions there because if you've got the old type, it's just the pipe. And obviously, the bayonet fitting on ours doesn't fit that pipe. It'd just be a straight. But I think what she's asking is what a lot of people do is they use the, the cyclone or the, the extra in, I think she's asking, might not be. Uh, the interceptor, if you know what I mean, to use one in front of I think it. So. Now, it does work. I've used one, and it does work, and they work well. And what the advantages of that as well is the cyclonic, the interceptor, is taking all the shavings and the dust in there before it even gets to the canvike. So you're prolonging again. You're not going to have a, a drum full of shavings. The filters are going to be cleaner, so you'll probably be able to run it for longer without overeating it. So, yeah, great idea, and it's something that we've got. This is the advantage, one of the reels that Ollie's just posted you on there that you're looking at, because we're manufacturing these self. I mean, at the moment, we were talking the other day, and we've just up production on that because they're becoming so popular. They're making about between 25 and 30 units throughout the range a day um, to keep up with demand at the moment. Um, but if there's anything that we feel... I'll make it better. Uh, we've got the capability now to change that. And obviously getting something like the interceptor is something that's on our mind at the moment. And basically watch this space. We'll see what we can come up with. Um, so going back to, we've showed you the lids. This is the, one, the other one that you've got. Uh, just to run through, um, Chad, 
the units that you've got you've got the 3364 which is the twin motored this one here 55 litre that's like say about 13 kgs 108 litres um, per second on that one for your your airflow obviously if you're only running one motor at a time that just halves so you're going down to 54 litres mm -hmm. and it's the same if you move up to a three litre one so you're basically looking about 54 litres per motor uh, the other one that you've got is the 3866 which is right. the 90 litre drum with three motors yep um, but obviously you can see there you've got and again all these can be operated independently most of the time with this and it is a bit of not confusion because if you've got a workshop and you've got a lot of pipe work around there you feel like you've got to get as much suction and as much power as you can um ideal the idea behind them they've got three motors because you once you use two motors you won't believe the amount of suction you get what you can do you can alternate the motors to give you a longer running time so keep swapping them over as well and then if you're doing sort of smaller work and you've got power tools on you can just use one motor at a time as well I've actually got a, uh, that one myself and I've got one, two, three on the switch and I always try and leave the switch on that I've used last and turn it off at the mains and then I, when I come back I always start up with the other one first and try and evenly wear the brushes and the motors when I'm using it. Um, so that would be a 90 litre three motor which is the um, 3866 which is US code on that one if i've got that right is a 104910 and then the other one we're just gonna to have to skip to the overhead while we move the camera so i want to go across to the wall mount one that we've, we've fixed under here so all in my cameraman doing a great job as normal is going to sneak in and then just move the camera around to over here and we've got that on the wall mount now and all it is i'll take this off and uh, just show you how it mounts on We've just got one simple bracket on the wall there that comes with the machine and then this drops straight on over there and the bottom lug is what keeps it square to the wall at the bike and then you can see the bayonet coming straight in at the, the front there so we take this off the 336 we can put that straight in there twist on you're ready to roll but obviously that machine or this machine is a 286-3 wall wall mounted and obviously the capacity is increased on this one because we've got a collection bag what I do with this one I always try and put the bag at a, a sensible height so you're not sort of up here trying to under the bag to drop it off try and get it sort of chest height so when this is full with shavings it's easy to clip off with the uh, bungee uh, we've got there drop it down and we can empty that out and then put the plastic bag back on but the setup in here with the bayonet it's a twin motor again on the top there so that one's a 10476 there again because it's two motors you've got 108 litres uh, a second on your flow rate and it weighs in again at about 14 kgs um, really nice bit of kit for your workshop it's tucked yeah. up on the wall out of the way you can come down and put your extension pieces on and you're not sort of walking around it so if you've got something like your lathe fixed in and you want to drop the pipe down it's there it's not in the way and it's going to be a great add to the uh, the workshop um i'm aware that we haven't even switched one on yet so i just want to go through the switching on in fact just before we do that i took a video of neil who's our um, welder uh who puts these together for us because he rolls the the collection basket before he tack welds it in place and then he drills and taps all the holes to put the brackets on I went on to see him earlier on today uh, just to show you <coughs> the jig he uses to clamp onto the machine uh, for the fixtures so that we know that the the bayonet comes out parallel with the wall so he puts these in place obviously this has all been done before we uh, we paint it clamps it in place drills it in then pops the rivets in so everyone's done by hand so they're nice and square you can see he's already cut the burnt the hole in there for the bayonet fitting at the same time drops the rivets in 
into place and punches them in. And then that then at that point will be sent away. You'll see in a minute he stacks them up how many he's got. That'll be sent to the uh, the paint plant to be painted up and uh, ready to come back. And then the other one, when he's done that, I'll have a word with him. He's taking his time. I'll have a word. <laughs> <laughs> this is after a, he's on peace time here, I think, something like that. But you'll see in a minute once he's riveted them. Uh, he'll stack them up. I don't know if you want to fast forward a bit on that, Ollie. You'll just see the uh, don't seem to be working the fast forward, but there we go. Once he's uh, put these in, you'll see the others that he's got behind him. You can just see them there on the pallet, all being done, ready for painting. I really like this machine. It's uh, a good workhorse and covers a multitude of sins with different machinery. Go and stack that up and then uh, lines it all up once the pallet's ready, off for painting. That's the top end of our sort of production line where they do all the welding. Well done, Neil. So, if we get back to the, the 336, we've put the first filter on. we put the the lid back on, drop that in place. You can see the clips that we've got here that secure that in place. Now, if you're gonna be moving this around a lot, I advise you use them. If you're not, there's enough suction when this has been used to hold that lid down. So it's not always required to put the lids on. Uh, that's done for transport purposes as well. What you'll see on the 90 litre one, there's a big ring on there that clamps it to and again, that makes sure that the, the whole unit is kept solid. If it was in a box and this was left loose, it has the tendency to move about when it's being shipped. So these secure it. But once the, so if you wanted to use them, that's great. But if you're not moving it for a while, you can leave them off. The suction that it does will actually pull the lid down in place. So we put the bayonet back on. This is where it becomes a bit difficult with this type of live because now we're relying on the noise that you're going to hear so we've got two motors on there obviously it's hard for you to see the suction that's one motor this is two motors that was the air then if this is important if you've got this on if you're a dust if you're doing shavings and you're doing wood turning and things like that if you leave these caps off and you're turning and it comes out on top obviously the shavings will come up on on top and try and get in there so leave that on but the reason we take these off is one of the big selling points of the canvike is a lot of people they haven't got a lot of space in the workshop and noise is a big issue if you're in your workshop and you've got a dust extractor running you've got a table saw running you've got your lathe running there's a lot of noise going on and you end up putting the earmuffs on to make it sort of peaceful the other thing is you've got to consider is the, the neighbours, especially where we are in the UK as well. Sometimes if you're in your shed or your garage, the neighbours, you're near your neighbour's house and they want to know what's going on. This is where Canvac comes into its own because the decibel rating on this is around... This is where you've got to be careful because Ollie mentioned earlier, we're in a small room environment here. And obviously if you were going to check the sound on here, It'd probably be different if we went to your bigger workshop chad because obviously you've got more room and things like that but around 74 decibels is what it will do if we put this these on which are the 63 mil hoses and we turn them on it'll reduce the noise down but i'm not sure how well that's picked up but i can 100 percent assure you it makes it pleasant to work in compared to the unit as standard and obviously you can put the two pipes on there if you're just dropping the pipe down and you're going into your workshop like i say it works out at about 68 decibels but how we can improve on that is you imagine the pipe if you've got for instance your um, wall mounted one you've got the pipes coming out and you can drill a little hole through the wall and put this pipe outside it's going to reduce it even more you're probably going to lose a few more decibels on top. Makes it a lot more pleasant. 
The other advantage with this pipe work is, as well as using it for exhaust, <clears throat> obviously it can be used as the accessory for smaller work. So what we'd do, we'd take this off, we could take the, the pipe off there, and we use what they call a, a DX100 R57, which is one of these. This takes it from 100 mil, sorry, it's 100 R63, takes it from 100 mil down to this 63 mil, and we can put that straight in then, and we can use a reduced pipe. Now the reason behind that is this is where I was thinking we might get a lot of questions because this is high pressure, low volume. You try to do this and get the same amount of suction with an extractor that is the opposite, which is one of the traditional types, Chad, which yep. you'd use probably on a planar thicknesser, a spindle moulder, things like that, uh, and they're high volume, sort of low pressure. And what that means is they're usually around 4 inch or 5 inch diameter rows. Now you reduce the diameter of those and you automatically lose power because you're not getting the airflow. So you're not able to do this on that type of machine. That's why this one is good for multitasking. You can use it on a multitude of machines and it's going to be efficient. The other disadvantage you've got with the other type is you've got a filter bag on top. Obviously they're a lot bigger in size, they're taking a lot more room up in your workshop and you've got the plastic collection bag underneath. Now as well as being a bit bulky and around, you can't do what we've just done and retain the suction and the power because what you're doing there, you're getting the same amount of draw through a smaller diameter, so it feels a lot stronger. You do that on the other type, you lose power because it can't draw the air in. The impeller's not allowing it to draw air through here, so you lose the power on it. The other thing is, with this system here, this three layered system of filtration, we're going to be able to sort of filtrate down to 0.5 of a micron. Now that's basically what we class as hospital standard. Your own body's got a system in it that'll take care of a lot, but it can only take care of so much. Now, where they used to sort of check it out was, what they'd do is they'd sort of get you running your machines in your workshop, different environments, how many machines you're running, and then they'd have a device that counted the particles of dust in the air. And what happens now is, obviously, when you've got this running, they come in and recheck it, and it's took away counting the particles of dust, and that's how we know this will filtrate down to 0.5. The other style you've got, with the big bags on top, the filter bag on top, every time the machine starts up, it gives you a big puff of air, and it throws the particles of dust back into, the, into your workshop. Mm -hmm. That'll be around 15 to 20 micron that you're actually throwing back in there that you're going to breathe in. So these actually look after you as well. So it's an health issue. So if you're going to use that reduced pipe, would you just use one motor then? Well, depends on the length of the pipe. If it's okay. a short pipe, I'd only need one because if you use two, what will happen, it'll start squealing at you a little bit because okay. it's trying to get that much air through here, the suction, I'll turn it on. I don't know if you could hear that, but it starts whistling at you a little bit. Yeah. Because it's really trying to work hard and it's trying to implode itself. If you've got a longer length of pipe, because obviously the further away we go, the more the draw is and then it will benefit from it. But the other one that I could show you is the one I use quite a lot. So we do this one. We do this one in a kit, which is, um, you just pass me the box over, Ollie, please. So this hose with a 63 mil on, we're doing a kit where you get a set of a set of filters with this. So it's a 40960, which is this kit here. And what you get with this, if we go overhead, is you get the DX100R63, you get a power tool adapter, 
a length of the O's and spare filters. If you were to buy all them individually, basically you're saving because you're buying it as a kit. So that pipe can be used for multi-purpose. But the other one I'll show you, we call it a DX100, sorry, a DX1500B. This is a, an inch and a quarter, about 32 mil O's, which is more flexible than the 63. Because if you're using sort of smaller power tools, you want that flexibility on your bench. So again, that goes straight on, onto there, and allows you to use that a bit more flexi. And then you can attach that to your power tools, your bench top tools and things like that. So that's a DX1500B that's useful. While we're on the accessories, we're all right for time, aren't we, Chad? Doing well. Is there any more questions coming up? While we're on accessories, the other one that we use quite a bit is opposable holes. This is great for the wood turners. And what happens with this one is again, we push this on to the bayonet fitting. We can push the poseable hose into there. These are proper airtight. The smaller ones are these. If you're an engineer, you've probably seen the smaller ones are these that do the coolant, you know, for if you're doing engineering work. So we can actually fix that in any position we want and it'll stay where it is. Um, I think we might have been off on the other camera showing that one. That's it. So we can tilt that over. So you get two lengths of 300 that click together on this knuckle. You can also buy extra ones of these at 300 millimetre at a time if you want to go a bit longer or higher, depending on the height of your sort of lathe or whatever it is you're putting on. But that allows you to go up behind your bowl when you're doing your sanding and things like that and it's not going to move. And it does a great job for bringing the suction in and getting all the dust because what we try and tell everybody, if possible, is sanding the bottom quarter when you're doing your bowl work. The dust is then going to go that way and around and this will pick it up before it gets back to you into your face so you're not breathing it in. So that's the poseable hose. And again, these are all available from Chad. Yes. Turner's Warehouse. They'll be on his website and uh, I'm sure he'll put a few links up after. To, uh, Absolutely. Craig, a couple of questions. Uh, first, I just want to comment on those exhaust hoses you showed the example. Um, we run two camvacs in our classroom and when they're running, you can still talk and, That's you know, right. like the students That's can right. talk and whoever. Yeah. So it's kind of amazing at the, the suction you get and still be able to talk with those exhaust. Uh, I've even been doing live streams where I've had it running and didn't think about it and turned it off and said, oh man, you guys probably couldn't hear me and they couldn't really even tell I turned it off. So it's really nice. Um, yeah. Couple questions. One is uh, any plans for a remote on off switch? You're asking all the right questions today. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, there's a lot, like I said, because we've got the production, there's a lot of things in the pipeline. I'm not gonna promise anything, but I can assure you that um, it's yeah. been thought of it as we speak. But, uh, that, that was Paul. That anything. wasn't me, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks and for then, the question, Paul. One other question uh, from Cameron. He's having difficulty finding the hosing here in the U.S. I know we're out of stock, but we have more of those exhaust pipes coming or hoses coming. Uh, is 63 millimeters the ID or the OD if he's looking for those? Um, on the actual size, on these CVA ones, the fitting as you go across, it's um, I know that's a tough one on the fly, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You're looking fifty-seven. Fifty-seven. I'll I'll post it on, but I think you're looking at the inside of about sixty-three, about fifty. It's hard one to judge here, but it's about it, it's about fifty five. I'll put I'll I'll put a link on for you okay. and put the actual size in. Yeah, we'll 
Yeah. We'll get more info. We'll put it in the description uh, yeah. after the, yeah. we're done here. But yeah. uh, and then, the oh, yep, good. Uh, Pete asks, is this basically an overgrown shop vac? And I know uh, when I've talked to you before, I said when, when we first got them, they kind of just looked like a shop vac, so we didn't know, but there's so much more. Um, I, I, I would if, hope it, I think it Pete is the old watching. Design. Yeah, I think it for the old design, yeah. And I've got the tendency to agree, but what's got into this to try and keep the filters clean and make it more efficient takes it above and beyond that. Obviously, the running time that you've got on there and the accessories that you can get with it, I can see where it's coming from because of the size and the, the style of the drum and everything else. But then yeah, you like say, you've got your, your wall mount and things like that. So I, I do appreciate where it's coming from with that. But I think there's a bit more gone into it than a, a standard shop like, to be fair. Um, yeah, Absolutely. One of the other kits, Ollie, if you just pass me this one, which is a, um, we call the workshop cleaning kit, which is this one. This is a 40950. And I quite like this one. I use this one myself quite a bit because you get, I'll put them there for now and I'll give you an idea with that one. Because I've used this a couple of times when we've been at an exhibition. Uh, and I've put that, the two pipes, straight into the top of the... Uh, <laughs> And it just does, it does exhaust it a little bit, not as good as the pipe, obviously, but it does yeah. exhaust it. But what that allows you to do then is put the different attachments on with the, uh, the hose on. So you end up having the, the brush for the workshop and then the hose goes straight into the other end and cleans it up. And then you get two more attachments with this as well. One, if you want to fix this in place, and then you get the brush one as well for cleaning yeah. up and in and around as well as the oars. So that's a, a nice bit of kit to keep to keep your workshop clean. Like I say, I have used this a couple of times, depending where I've been, and I've got in with this first and then pushed the oars in top just to give me a bit more length, if you know what I mean, onto yeah. that just before I push it out. So even though you're going to be using them as a cleaning up brush that you can use them for other things as well at the same time lots of options the, the crevice the crevice tool comes with it which is probably one of the best tools for everybody for a gain in and out so that's a that's the two kits really and the uh, the poseable oars that we wanted to let people be aware of of what we're doing the other one that i use quite a bit and comes in really handy You've probably got something similar oh, yeah. on. and i have that this one i velcro i've got velcro on there on mine and i put that on the floor behind the lathe where all the shavings are going and then i just brush into the the gap and oh, it yeah. takes it up from it straight that's up great from it. um and that works really well and again we'll, we'll post that one on for you to uh, to show you the as part of the accessory kit okay so just to recap a little bit, when we're looking at the efficiency of the machines, this will cover a multitude of, of jobs from planar thickness in, sort of a lot of volume in there to really fine dust. Um, because you've got to start thinking about your own health. And these machines, even though they're taking the shavings and the dust away from the machine, they're looking after you at the same time because then you're not breathing it in as you're doing it. Whereas what I was explaining, the, the style the older style that we used to be up against with the bag on top, that is your filter. And instead of 0.5 of a micron, that everything's getting trapped in here, they're working on 15 to 20 micron that's going to be, as soon as you switch it on, it pops back into the atmosphere. You do get people that do put the pleated um, filters on instead of the bags onto them. But to be honest with you, they cost as much as the, the machines. Yeah. Uh, or they go over here anyhow when you're doing it. Uh, so we're finding them a bit bulky and insufficient in terms of sort of suction and fil filtration really compared to this if you're doing a comparison there's obviously okay. room for them in certain circumstances but in comparison um so just a few things to remember three filter uh, three step filtration good quality motor five year guarantee the full range that will suit most workshops uh, in and around there I know you've got them all in stock, Chad. Um, and put them on there. So uh, we, 
Yeah, we have all but the large one, but it's on the way. Yeah. Um, so we do have yeah, most the three, of them. the three motored. So the three motored, three eight six dash six, is on its way available. You're jumping up with that one. You're going to about twenty to twenty one kilograms weight wise. But there is good handles on this for lifting it into different positions when you're doing yeah. that. Uh, but also you can buy wheel kits for these. Um, it's nothing clever. It's a fabricator ring that sits underneath, and as you open the bolt up, it clamps into position, locks it in position on three wheels, and allows you to move it around as well. Uh, so we thought about most things when we're looking at designs. But again, like you just said, we innovations and things like that. The bayonet fitting's new. There's other things we've got in the pipeline to keep it going. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to help everybody out with their sort of wish wish list, if you like. Absolutely. Craig, I got a question for you. I think I saw Ethan do it. And if this isn't authorized, you know, stop me. But I think he used the exhaust yeah. with one motor running to blow out the the yeah. filters. Is that an authorized procedure or no? Well, we 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 never use it till he's actually done that. Um, he has put and all he does what Chad's trying to explain there, which did a good job of if I did that and then that. Obviously, I turn this one on. It's going to blow the air in and throw out that way. We haven't we haven't got that in our manual. We're looking at it to see if it's going to do any damage or it's. That's going to what be I was curious about. <laughs> uh, so we're not at the moment. We're not. Uh, but these other things that we're looking at with the filters and things like that. But it works for. He's actually got a filter or looking at a filter that he's put on himself as well. A different style of filter that that works for. Uh, but what um what you've got to be careful of is obviously you've got the air coming out it's trying to get out there and we don't want to really push it back in and overeat everything um yeah. so i understand what it's doing and in principle in principle it should work it shouldn't be an issue but we are doing some testing to see if it's going to do any damage first excellent i okay. i don't see uh anyone have any other questions for craig uh, Peter Hollis in the UK, he said he's in Midlands. Is there anywhere he can purchase the hose that you know of offhand? Yeah, yeah, we can. Uh, if he's in the Midlands area, moving up that way, we've got a couple of sort of people. We've got DJ Evans in Bury St. Edmunds, the older mail order. We've got uh, cars at Boston up that way. I mean, we're not that far from there. If he wants to just give us a ring at the office in the morning, send us his postcode, we'll put that in. If he does it on our website, anyhow, it will bring up his nearest dealer. Oh, perfect. Perfect. So if you go on the website, put his postcode in, search for dealers, put his postcode in, it'll bring you up his nearest dealer. Whereas the, I think the same would apply for you, Chad, if they did it in yeah. the US. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate it, Craig. You answered a lot of questions. Um, I run my three motor a lot with just two and I don't alternate it. So I'm glad you mentioned rotating the motors for wear of that, that bush. So I hadn't ever thought of that. Um, but there's been a lot of little things that you've said that kind of made sense. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. thanks for, thanks for the I time. I don't see any other questions right now. Was there anything that you wanted to cover that I didn't uh, let you? Uh, no, no, everything's, everything's good. I mean, you've seen the Ranger accessories. I think yep. basically what I've tried to get across is the more you look after the machine, the more you'll get out of it with filtration and things like that and keeping it clean. Yeah. You know what I noticed? Uh, the first few I sold were people in their garage or in their shop just using one. And what I've seen lately is more and more people are that have bigger shops or production shops are getting canvacs to run a couple machines because they love the power and the efficiency yeah. And rather than having one giant unit, they can yeah. have multiples and it I mean, is so much more efficient and easy. The only thing to remember, you just be a little bit clever with your setup because if you've got two machines, there's mm -hmm. no point having the extractor to one side and a longer pipe covering two machines. Get the extractor in the middle and sort of, especially with a bayonet now, have the two different pipes that you can connect in. So you're going to be more efficient because the shorter the pipe is, nearer the drum the, the more efficient you're going to be with suction and just make sure if you're putting blast gates on which is always a good idea or you're putting any joints on that the seal correctly so you're not getting anything escaping that'll uh, 
affect the suture. That makes sense. Very good. Well, awesome. Thanks so much, Craig. If anybody is interested in CAMVACs in the U.S., uh, we're a dealer at Turner's Warehouse. If you're in another country, I know we have a lot of U.K. and other countries on today. Uh, if you go to recordpower.com, you can find a dealer near you. But if you can, uh, if we can help you in the U.S., just give us a holler. All the links will be in the description here, and uh, we really thank you, Craig. No problem at all. Enjoyed it again, Chad. Thanks for having us over there, and uh, look forward to the next one. All right, I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Have a good day. I'm just ending.